Why are bees important? Look, pollinators are taking a real hit. Farmers are just removing hundreds of thousands of hectares of native vegetation. You get rid of the native vegetation, where are the pollinators going to go? So you build a house and you concrete everything, you get rid of the garden, where are the pollinators? So everything we tend to do is getting rid of pollinators. And then you have, oh, where are the bees? And uh, <laughs> it's a very frustrating question to hear, where are the bees? Well, they'd be everywhere if you stop clearing a little bit. So one, one thing we can do to redress this balance is to actually sort of work with stingless native bees. They're native to the area, they'll feed off exotic and native plants, they're very easy to keep. You can just put them on a balcony, something like that, uh, and all of a sudden you're helping pollinators generally and you're, you're actually having an insect, a beneficial insect that's really interesting to watch. So what you can do is once they get set up, you can watch them fly in and out, it's like an aquarium on wings. So just watch them fly in and out, watch them bring back pollen to their hive. They've got little baskets on their back legs so you can see what they're feeding off, what they're bringing back to the hive. They're inherently fascinating. You're doing something good for the environment, you're helping bees, you're educating people generally about what these things are because most people don't even know they're bees. So why do native bees? Because it's important, because you've got to do something. And sometimes doing something doesn't mean living in a tree for six months, stopping it from being chainsawed down. Sometimes doing something is as simple as recycling, getting a native beehive, doing some permaculture. There's some very simple things you can do that make a real difference. And this is one of them. To make splitting easier, we're going to use these four strips of uh, plastic, plastic film, about five centimetres width. Now these are going to help us split next year. The idea is that the bees won't be able to build structure sort of in between the hive so easily and that when we pull them apart there won't be uh, honey pots getting destroyed. Now I've just got to get some masking tape. So now I'm going to get the hive we're going to split. So I place it on here, the workbench and we're going to start the splitting process. The thing about this hive is, I don't know if it's ready or not. So it might be ready, it might not be. I got the hive out of the foam box. It doesn't always go that easily. But now I'm going to see, is this hive ready to be split? <laughs> I'm big on the fingers crossed today, guys. <laughs> we got the date, it was split on the 8th of November last year. So if this hive is ready to be split, we're going to see eggs in both halves of the hive, but I'm not going to know till I open it up. So here goes. These are honey pots. This is pollen. There are the eggs. You can't really see the concentric circles so easily, but they're actually in a bit of a circle. Now, how do I know this hive isn't ready to be split? If you can look at the other half of the hive, no eggs. There's maybe one egg. If we split this hive, nothing can happen. You know, like the chances of it surviving are like a million to one. See, there's no egg mass in here. Because there's no egg mass in here, we're not going to split it. So we're just going to seal it up and we're going to do the retrofit so that next year it's going to be easy. Now the thing, you can actually see the structure, see how it's above the halfway? Those bits of plastic are now just going to get in the way, so we can't do it with this hive. Okay, so now we're actually going to see, does the re retrofit concept work? How good is that? It actually fits. I mean, this, this is pretty obvious that it's going to fit, but you know, until it actually does, you don't really know. So now we're going to put the top half on. Got to make sure that the holes line up, otherwise the bees can't get out and that's going to be a tragedy. So just push this in and we know it does because, okay, so now the secret weapon is the pipe. Just want to put something in. 
a wedge in uh, just to make sure the hive doesn't move. Okay, so I've got three uh, retro uh, halves just so I don't have to go back because we're going to do another split after this. Okay, here we go. How good is that? There's our hive. It works. Am I pleased? <laughs> I'm exceedingly happy. This is the combination of nine months of work. So whenever something like that happens, you've got to be happy. Okay, so we're just going to... The tape is slashing tape. If you think of going into business, I'd say go into the tape business. This is like gold. <laughs> it's unbelievably expensive. We potentially lose one or two hives a year through water getting into them. So this tape's waterproof, very sticky. If you get water in them, they literally drown. They're all going to where the, they think the entrance is. So I just tip them onto the box, I'll work it out. So the good news is the bees, even though this is a completely new entrant, they're starting to use it. I think it's amazing that they work it out so quickly, that this is their new home. Uh, they'll put some resin on it and the next thing you know, uh, this, whole, <laughs> this whole thing will be time of their life that they'll just forget about. I love them. I love them because they're doing something good for the environment. They're inherently interesting. It's a bit like, why do you love anything? I don't know, I've just sort of bonded with them. I, I know I could die in front of them and they would just fly over my body and never care. Uh, there's no real connection with the bees to me, but for me there's actually a, an emotional connection with the bees. So every time a hive dies, it really annoys me. So it's just something that uh, for me is a special sort of thing. Okay, so I think I should do the next hive. What do you think?